It started with a few shovelfuls of historic earth, where the land is part of one of Salt Lake City's most historic blocks. It is the block where Bishop Tuttle laid the cornerstone of one of Utah's oldest church buildings, St. Mark's Cathedral. It is the block where Salt Lake trolleys rumbled into the terminal. It's where thousands of early masons conducted their rituals. The first shovelfuls contained the bricks and the stones of those earlier buildings. Workers uncovered runes of the old crack system. The early stages of construction offered an outline of what was to come as Utah Episcopalians were now taking another bold step in the 140 year journey. I am standing here in the middle of the site for the new building. In front of me that way is first south and here is second east. All the parking for this facility will be behind me to the north so the actual structure will be just to the west and north of the cathedral and we think its architectural lines will meet and match and highlight the wonderful Richard Upjohn building to my left, the Cathedral Church of St. Mark. The asphalt parking lot in front of me will be gone. And we will see there rather a beautiful park-like area with several entrances to it. It will have benches and trees and flowers. Within a month, there was a new foundation of concrete and rebar. The proximity to the beautiful cathedral reminded all that this was a continuation of a foundation of pioneer faith by those who were before us. The Episcopal Church was one to build for the future from those very first days that Bishop Tuttle arrived in Utah back in 1867. It adopted the spirit of the West. Our diocese has always had a kind of an energy, a pragmatism, an openness. The new center was designed to carry on the faith the quest for social justice, and the service our church has pledged for 140 years. It also is designed to be a statement of a commitment to a green ministry, a ministry that is responsible to the dwindling resources of the earth. Just as Episcopalians have built dozens of churches, schools, ministries of all kinds, workers continued building to the future. As winter came, they wrapped the building in plastic sheets, so to keep building and building. By now, one could see the outline of a major new source of ministry and offices, a high-tech resource center, and a gathering place for all of us. I certainly want people to come in and feel at peace and to feel that they have a place there. And pillar by pillar, brick by brick, it was taking shape passers-by could watch the construction of a wonderful new place. Another bold statement from a bold church. Perhaps the most fascinating part of the construction was watching the many giant objects that flew through the air. Early on, it was rebar. Later, there were large fats and containers. And finally, on one hot summer day, there were the trusses for the roof. It is the story of the construction of a building, but of course it is more. It is the story of our new home, kind of like a parish hall for all our ministries. It is the story of our new offices of the diocese, built so the diocese grows as a resource to all our ministries. It is the story of a gathering place for all of us, the story of the building of the Episcopal Church Center of Utah. You know, it's the nature of Christian faith that we reach out to other people. And to have a facility where people are welcome to come, where we invite them, is really critical to me. And we now have another stop on our journey, a journey that's lasted 140 years.